Good morning, and welcome to this session of Business Breeders, a live webinar series hosted by Goodman Group at Brock University. My name is Abdul Rahimi, and it's my pleasure to serve as the director of Goodman Group here at Brock University. Goodman Group is a community-focused learning and development services provider that works to support professionals, businesses, entrepreneurs pursuing growth through professional development certificate programs, executive education, consulting services, and startup support. It is my distinct pleasure to welcome you all to today's session as you're taking your break with us here today. This webinar series aims to provide 45 minute readers that are filled with insightful discussions on to timely topics that are relevant to businesses and everyday lives, led by award winning Brock University faculty and leading industry experts. They're all encouraging thoughtful debates and keeping us feeling connected as we get through this all together. This webinar series is hosted on Wednesdays from 11 to 11.45. Momentarily, I'll be handing the screen over to, the, to, the, to today's webinar lead, and that's Mariola, who will be leading the discussion for us. But let me pause for a moment and just uh, capture the format. So Mariola will speak for about 30 minutes, and then we'll spend some time answering your questions. Uh, some of which we have received at the point of registration. Thank you very much for all of you who have submitted your questions and comments at that point. You may also put your questions in the chat feature, which is open now and, and live. And you may also tweet your questions and comments uh, at GSB Goodman Group. That is at GSB Goodman Group, all one word. So without further ado, it's my distinct pleasure to introduce to you today's webinar lead, and that's Mariella, who is a Brock alum and also a TEDx speaker, coach, and an entrepreneur. In her work, Mariella helps individuals achieve more. Throughout her ventures, she has been afforded amazing opportunities to learn from the best around the world, and she's here to talk to us about some of that today. Mariella, welcome. Thank you so much, Abdul. Welcome, welcome. And uh, welcome everyone. As Abdul mentioned, my name is Mariola, and I am not sure if you can see my slide. Not yet. <laughs> Be there. They're just coming up, perhaps. Okay. Can you see it now? Perfect. Thank you. Fantastic. I have this incantation. I love technology. Technology loves me, and technology loves me today. Awesome. So as Abdul mentioned, my name is Mariel and I work with high achieving individuals, professionals, leaders, and helping them to take their success game to that next level of excellence. And I do it by identifying and removing some of the subconscious blocks. Now, because you're already here, pretty big chances you already are taking yourself to that next level of excellence. And you already know that the strongest force in your personality is that need to stay consistent how you define yourself with your identity. But did you know that research shows that 95% of this identity is set on the subconscious level? So today I'm going to help you to tap a little bit more into that 95% of mystery and help you to unblock some of these self-sabotaging behaviors. And for you, when you know how to unblock some of these self-saboteurs, it will get you to feel much more happy because you will proactively can take actions towards your goals and you will feel much more free because you will, instead of just reacting emotionally, you will be able to respond more effectively. And ultimately, you will also feel much more successful because you will be able to get to your goals much faster and maybe set that example to your followers or to those that you deeply care for. So how I'm going to do it is by showing you how point number one how i went from myself from being that unfulfilled achiever to that next level performer and what's my what my turning point was how the subconscious programming is keeping you stuck and we'll get into some of the keys to getting off to a fast start to stop sabotaging your success and before i dive in into the content i would love to introduce you to a quick visualization and give yourself a gift i know we're all busy these days and running busy busy but just to give yourself a gift right now for a few seconds to do this quick visualization with me and whether you're watching this webinar live or whether you're watching this video just give yourself that gift of a few seconds so if i can ask you to close your eyes and take a deep breath. Inhale through your nose. Exhale through your mouth. 
And as you're inhaling, imagine the bright cleansing light just going into your body and giving you peace. And as you're exhaling, exhale any of the busyness, maybe any doubts, worries. You can big inhale and exhale. And just know that everything happens for a reason. There is a reason you are here today. Somebody, maybe yourself, got you to get here because you know there is something more inside of you to be awakened. And as you are here, Give yourself the gift of putting yourself into that state of positive anticipation. Maybe like during Christmas time or going on a trip when you know something awesome is about to happen. Know that there is a reason and in this presentation you can find at least one nugget, one idea. When you apply, it's gonna help you to take your success game to that next level of excellence. You are at the beginning of a beautiful season of spring. How exciting is that, that you get to learn some fresh ideas and write a totally new chapter for yourself. So decide and commit that you're going to walk away with at least one idea in the next 45 minutes that will help you to make this year your best year yet. Fantastic. Take a deep breath, open your eyes and keep that smile going. Fasten your seat belts and let's begin. So as I promised, the first thing I'm gonna tell you is how about my journey, how I took myself from being that unfulfilled achiever to that next level performer. So about 10 years ago, I hit what I would call a rock bottom for myself, one of the toughest points in my life. And ironically, um, my life, if you look at outside, it wasn't that bad. I mean, I had a good relationship, good career, good enough health. Um, and, but the problem was it was good. It wasn't epic. So what started happening to me, I lost a drive and stopped growing. And I don't know if you've heard that expression, when, when you stop growing, you start dying. And that's exactly what happened. So I gained a bunch of weight. I was over hundred pounds overweight and uh, my relationship started to suffer. My career started to suffer. And really um, nothing is going, was going very well. I ended up going and seeing a specialist and got diagnosed with being a perfectionist, OCD perfectionist. And of course, nothing was perfect. And um, at this point, I kind of, I, I was really, really annoyed with myself because it wasn't that I didn't know what to do. I mean, I knew what to eat, I knew the knowledge to apply from the all the self-help books. I knew the content from all of the leadership seminars and no matter how many leadership or uh, personal development seminars I would attend, I just wasn't applying what I knew. And it was just so frustrating that I kind of, in that suffering, I decided that the traditional ways of the personal development or therapies not, are not working for me. So I'm just gonna do my own research. And I really started just ferociously studying, like every minute of my day, just studying and doing my own research. Anything I could get my hands on, on epigenetics, neuroscience, human potential, world-class success philosophies. And I ended up spending like tens and thousands of dollars into hiring coaches, getting training and mentorship from some of the top icons in the industry. Now, um, and I was always noticing there's some missing pieces that if I apply one, the other one is slipping up. So what I did for myself, because I truly just wanted to get out of that suffering state of not doing what I already know what I should be doing. So I started putting together all of these pieces of puzzles together and I developed a blueprint for myself. Um, that blueprint that helped me not only with that life of achievement, but also a life of fulfillment. And I started applying it like piece by piece. It was very simple and um, pretty much. The, and also the premise of this blueprint was that I realized I'm not broken, just like we are not broken. We, we are not broken. We don't need to be fixing, but rather we need to peel off the layers of whether it's a conscious, subconscious or super conscious or spiritual programming that is preventing us. And it's a lot of it is not even visible to our eyes. So just peeling off these layers so we can truly awaken our full essence. So as a result of the blueprint, I was able to release 100 pounds. I went from uh, fear of public speaking and presentations and anxiety presentations to becoming a TEDx speaker. Uh, and um, I started my own business, increased my income significantly, 
But most importantly, I created a magical moments with my loved ones where it's I can sit and play with my kids and don't feel guilty that I'm working or when I was working, not feeling guilty that I'm not playing with my kids. So it really just created this life of fulfillment. And I'm really not saying this to impress you, but express to you that if it was possible for me, it's sure it's possible for you. And I don't know where you are at, at your journey right now. You might be already at the highest levels of success and you just want to take it to that next level and he hitting that ceiling, or perhaps you want to take that success and put it into other areas of your life. Or maybe you are suffering with everything what's happening around the world right now. Or perhaps you're just drifting and it, the life is neither good nor bad, just like it was for me. But you know there is more to it. You want to experience more of that passion and you might be even are curious, what does your full potential looks like? So if that's how you feel, this presentation is for you because I promise you, I mean, I won't have time to go over the entire blueprint because we only have half an hour together. However, I will give you points that I promise you, if you start with these, you will start turning your life around big time. So, that brings me to the second point I promise I'm going to share with you, which is showing you how your subconscious wiring is keeping you stuck. So in a moment, I'm going to describe to you how the this, this subconscious saboteurs are happening. And because when you are able to recognize it, you can be much more proactive and recognize how you can program your subconscious mind so it doesn't program you. Now, I don't know if you know anything about subconscious programming, so I'm just going to give you the, the few, few main things that you must absolutely know. Subconscious mind is much more powerful than your conscious mind. It also doesn't have logic or logical thinking. It doesn't know what's good, what's bad for you. So it pretty much accepts anything that you will allow it to accept. And it gets programmed every minute, every second, every moment of your life from the day you were born. And the most of the programming happens up to the age when you are five years old. And that programming goes, goes in and pretty much inhales everything that is around you. And how the subconscious programming happens, it happens anything that you experience, anything that you're exposed to, anything that you hear, see, feel, touch, experience, anything, um, anything that you watch, any even subliminal messages that you can hear in, in music, in, um, in, in your perception even even the thoughts of and of other people. Now, the reason why also it's important, the one thing that is very important for you to know that in that subconscious mind, there is something what's called self-image, subconscious identity. And that subconscious identity, it's a very important concept to know because the subconscious identity, similarly like you have the conscious self-image, the subconscious identity is very powerful and it will always keep you at the level of performance where is it set at. So if, you are, if your subconscious identity is set as someone, like for me, for example, it was being at 220 pounds, um, I was, that, that set point was at 220 pounds. So no matter what I would try, what, even though my goal was to lose weight and be 130 pounds, no matter what I would try, it would not, it, it, like I would always go back to that 220 pounds because that set point was there. It's if you are making $80,000, but you're dreaming about making, let's say $250,000, if your subconscious identity set at $80,000, you will continue making $80,000 and your actions, behaviors, thoughts, and everything else around is gonna make sure that it will keep you on that, on that level. And I'm going to, in a, in a moment, I'm gonna explain to you how that happens. But you might be asking yourself, because I oftentimes get this question, so I wanna address it, how do I know where my subconscious identity is set at? Like, how do I know the point? Where is it set with my relationship, with my income levels, with my fitness levels? So close your eyes for a second and think of that area that you're curious about. Where is that set point for you in your subconscious identity? And think of for the past couple of years, how are your results? consistent results. So on average, were you making $80,000? On average, were you at 180 pounds? On average, you're attracting certain people, always the same people into your life. On average, you, you exemplify certain leadership skills in the same way. Open your eyes. You can jot down that number or that set point. 
because that's exactly where your subconscious identity is currently set at. Your outer expressions are the reflections of your inner programming. And it's important for you to know because if you can rewire that subconscious programming, that identity, you will put yourself into the flow and you will align yourself with that goal that you want to achieve. Now, the second question I get around this time is, okay, we're not five years old anymore. We are not children. Does it mean you cannot teach the old dog new tricks? Well, so what happens, I want to show you that, yes, you can teach the old dog new tricks. And what actually happens to us, the conditioning, the subconscious programming continuously stays. However, we develop something what is called filter. And filter, so after like once we grow older, we are six, seven, eight, and so on and so forth, uh, that filter is pretty much set of beliefs, values, and mindsets that attaches any meaning to anything that happens around you anything that you hear, feel, see, or, or, or smell, or touch. So it attaches the meaning. Now the filter can be negatively charged or positively charged. So when you have a filter that it's negatively charged, what's gonna happen? Anything that happens outside that harmonizes with that negativity is going to penetrate through that filter and lower that self image, that set point on the subconscious level. So if you are, your filter is negative, you hear some criticism, it's gonna go through that filter and it's gonna lower again that self image and, and lower that self image. Now, if the filter, um, even if you have negative filter and if something positive goes in, it won't even penetrate through the filter because the meaning won't be attached and it kind of bounces back. So even if you come across some opportunity, you're not gonna explore it because the filter is negatively ch charged at this point. And um, vice versa, when the, the filter is positive, any positive messaging that goes in, it just penetrates and strengthens that image. And any negative messaging that goes in, the filter doesn't even accept. So it doesn't accept the criticism, but um, accepts all of the opportunities. And in fact, because of something what's called reticular activating system in our brain, our brain will harmonize and search more for the opportunities that are aligned with that filter. And in effect, will program that subconscious identity. Now, Typically, you don't have just positive or negative filter, and most people don't. Um, so what it means that some of the areas, you might have positive filters, some areas you might have negative filters, meaning think of some area where you are achieving the results you're happy with. And that means that your filter is positive there. And maybe some areas where they're not as, maybe you're not, you're suffering, you're not getting the right results. Typically the filter is negative. Now, it is important for you to know because this way you can take that positive charge and kind of transmute into the negative charge. But ideally the ultimate, what do you wanna develop? And that's what I do with my clients is you wanna develop that filter system, what, uh, what it's called the automatic success reflex mechanism. So when I work with my clients, we literally strengthen that filter overall so much so that no matter what happens outside, whether it's a negative, positive, the brain automatically turns it into an opportunity and success. So it's, it's kind of the next level of the silver lining. Um, it's not only, okay, something bad happened and I guess there is something good out of it, but it's literally expanding that adversity into opportunity that it's much greater than adversity. And simple example is that um, my clients last year, I mean, COVID happened, it was a global adversity for all of us. And my clients, not only they were surviving, but they were thriving. And because of that simple concept, concept of just having that filter into that automatic success reflex mechanism where they could very quickly just capture any of the opportunities coming their way. Now, I promise I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about why that happens that and how our psyche keeps us in that consistent with that set point, that subconscious point. So our psyche kind of you can our identity you can compare to the system similar to the cybernetic mechanism and cybernetic is pretty much a control system that maintains the definite course of action and will not deviate from the set target so similarly our 
our actions and behaviors will maintain that definite course of actions and will not deviate from that target that is set in your subconscious. So think about the airplane. You know how airplane is set to go to Florida and it's flying to Florida and let's say there's turbulence and and, and kind of takes it off guard a little bit. The autopilot mechanism is going to redirect it, turn all the machines and all of the technology that needs to happen to redirect it back to go to Florida and don't deviate and go fly somewhere else. And similarly, that's what happens in our brain. You might want to have the goal set of, let's say, making $250,000, and you will set up that goal, and you're going towards that goal. And But if that subconscious identity is not set at 80000 you will start showing the behaviors, and, and the self-sabotaging behaviors are going to come out. And I'm going to talk to you in a moment about how you can recognize those. They start coming out to sabotage you and just bring you back to at the levels you are set at. Like think of the lottery winners. The research shows that most of the lottery winners within year, within a couple of years of winning the lottery, no matter how much they won, they go back to the old self and they are losing all of the money because their subconscious identity wasn't set at the levels to keep this money. Now it also works in reverse. So let's say you have $80,000 job and you get laid off and you go on social assistance and now you're making, I know, $30,000, that mechanism is going to bring you right back up. So you will find the motivation to actually start writing resume, go applying for the jobs, just so you go back to that $80,000 salary back. So the next point, and you might be asking yourself, okay, how do I recognize how, how my psyche is going to sabotage me? How do I recognize these saboteurs? And if you watched my TEDx, it is through the pushback reflex. And what it is, it's pretty much in your behavior. Um, what's going to happen is the pushback reflex is like that set of behaviors and actions that will slow you down or will totally stop you from going towards your goal when your subconscious identity is not rewired. And how it shows up, it shows up in any fear doubt, anxiety, procrastination, pain, like even physical pain, mood swings, overindulgence um, in eating or binge watching Netflix, anything. And how it starts initially when you have a goal at the very beginning, it's very subtle. So it could be as subtle as procrastination. Like think about the time where you had to do a presentation, but you had enough time and suddenly you're like, oh, you know what? I got to clean up my office first. Or I got to check the emails first. It's very subtle, but it's still a pushback reflex. Now, when it gets closer to that goal, the pushback becomes stronger and more intense. So then very close probably to the presentation, you might experience the nervousness or anxiety or even doubts that it's not good enough. Or sometimes it could be even physical pain. You might get headache. A um, couple of examples that I can use uh, from my clients, they they always tell me to share it. I, I coach um um, quite a few athletes and what is the, the skydiving champions in France or some of the bodybuilders um, and what happens to them just before the competition, like a week before they start getting cravings for the food that there is no physiological, that physiologically doesn't make sense for them to crave because they hadn't had that food for years, but they will start having cravings for that. And what happens, um, or they also will start going into anxiety or doubt about themselves. They did all this beautiful work to sculpt their body or prepare, and suddenly they are just fearful that they're not worthy to go on the stage. Um, for me, a very, um, so something actually, um, the other, actually, the other example that I did did want to bring it to you um, is the professional example. When uh, one of my clients, she was about to sign a contract with Richard Branson, and what happened? Literally, she couldn't get out of bed with the back pain because she says, "Well, I can't even get to my lawyers. I'm so excited, like it's, it's, I mean, dream come true, and I can't get it to to that next level." And um, the the pushback reflex is so subtle, and it's because of something in our brain, what's called negativity bias. Our brain is designed to keep us to survive, not to keep us happy. So that negativity bias will get us to to focus on that negativity a little bit more but it's so subtle it is so subtle and for me myself my personal example is i mean i was doing a tedx 
about the pushback reflex. So I knew the whole mechanics behind it. And what was happening to me, I was going through my own pushback reflex along the way. I was like months before I started procrastinating on writing then, and I knew it, like, it's a, it's a, it, it's a pushback. Um, uh, weeks before I started having anxiety, days before, that's where I really started. Um, actually, two days before I started doubting that my speech is terrible and um, it's going to be terrible. And it's and I was going through that pushback reflex minutes before I went up on the stage. I don't have a fear of public speaking anymore, but minutes before I went up on the stage, suddenly I started worrying which shoes I'm wearing. I had picked my shoes like weeks ago, weeks before that. And it's just a subtle pushback, but it was preventing me because I was about to push through, go to that next level and achieve that consistent result. And luckily for me, I worked with my coach and I coached my coach on what are the steps we need to take. And when, when she ad identifies for me, what's gonna, when I'm going through that pushback reflex and what is the formula to unblock it and what, what steps she needs to guide me through. So I can, I can push through it because I can't afford to kind of just lean into the pushback reflex too much. And that's what I do with clients. We literally, we get them so in tuned into, um, seeing their own pushback reflexes and creating the strategies for them to overcome it. Because when you're at a certain level, you kind of don't have time to procrastinate for too long, or you don't want to um, spend, dwell too much into the anxiety mode. So you just want to push through it so we can achieve the consistent results, stay at that level, and then find another level. Um, but yeah, the pushback, it's a very, very sneaky way. So that brings us to the third point that I promise I'm going to share with you today and is the keys to getting off to a fast start to stop sabotaging your success. Um, now, I got to tell you a little secret. I don't really believe too much into motivational industry or, or too much of the motivational psychology because it really didn't work for me just just thinking positively and i will didn't work for me and um i will never tell my clients just think positively because it didn't work for me and i don't believe it works when you're already at the certain level of success as my clients are and even respectfully i have to disagree with mr henry ford who said whether you believe you can or you believe you can't it's true well have you ever had a situation where you believed you can and you still didn't do it? Or have you ever thought that you can't do something? It's impossible. You can't do that extra push up. You can't meet that deadline, but someone, maybe a coach, mentor, or your boss pushed you and you were able to do that extra push up or you were able to meet that deadline. So at a certain level of achievement, you want to kind of look into more innovative practices. And it brings me to the point that number one, what you absolutely want to make it non-negotiable for you for yourself is to develop that positively charged filter. So no matter what happens, if it rains on your parade, no matter what happens around us, you're able to have that automatic success reflex mechanism within you that it's able to capture the opportunities and doesn't slow you down in your progress and helps you to live that life of fulfillment for your loved ones. Second of all, you want to be able to identify the blind spots and push through your pushback reflex. Now, the jar cannot read its own label, so you might need some assistance of a friend, mastermind, colleague, coach, mentor. Um, just like myself, I, I needed to use my coach to make sure that they can kind of just point out what's happening with the blind spots I'm not seeing. Um, you might want to set up the system for yourself that, number one, you want to see what's your favorite flavor of sabotaging is. And then what are the steps that can help you to push through that pushback reflex in efficient manner? And then the third one is rewire your subconscious identity. So I think by now you already see how important it is to have that set point in that subconscious identity at the level that you want to achieve your goal. So if you want to make $250,000, you do want to rewire yourself. You want to rewire that subconscious identity that it is at the $250,000. And how you can do it is by tapping into their multiple tools. I mean, again, we don't have time to go over all of the tools, but I am a strong believer. You never want to see the side of the goal without any even smallest action you can take. So one of the tools I embedded in my TEDx, so feel free to go and there is a one minute visualization that helps you to on a 
subconscious level start tapping into that real essence that most epic version of you and every single time you go through this every single time you're stepping into that version of yourself it will start to help you to connect different neuro different neurons in your brain different neuropaths and this way you start creating different neuropaths you start rewiring that subconscious identity so as a result you start taking actions as that epic version of yourself so i really strongly suggest that you want to condition your mind for the results that you want so your mind doesn't condition you for the results that you don't want now in summary I promise that I'm going to cover my journey with you and we covered that. I promise I'm going to tap into some self-sabotaging behaviors for you to recognize we, we did that. And lastly, we just tapped into some of the keys so you can start to learn how to stop sabotaging yourself. Agree? So now let me ask you, have you learned at least one idea or have I reminded you at least one idea that you didn't hear, didn't remember before this presentation that will help you to recognize the self-sabotaging behaviors or maybe even help somebody that you deeply care for? If yes, take this right arm up, lean a little bit forward, pat yourself on the shoulder and congratulate yourself for being open-minded and capturing this for yourself. Now, I know we don't have much time, but I do want to give you the time and opportunity and in case I won't get to all of the questions today I really would love to hear from you I absolutely love what I do I think I have the best gig on the planet I get to serve organizations and um and individuals around the world I love doing it so just connect with me to see how you can partner up and help others to spread the news and help them to awaken the best versions of themselves and um even in case I don't get to any questions I really wanted to leave the contact information and I will be gladly to follow up and and help you to understand more whatever we don't cover during the session so that concludes my present my content presentation and i'm going to pass the mic to abdul mariola thank you a lot of very interesting points and i'm sure um would have you know a, a number of points would have resonated uh with uh, a number of folks here or those who are watching uh, the recording at a later time. A um, couple of questions that have come in. Uh, let me uh, get to the first one here. So, do you think our society's tendency towards rewarding conformity and punishing deviation from social norms is a contributing factor in our self-sabotage? And if so, what can anything be done to shift or loosen those broader cultural pressures so we are less likely to settle for being average? That's a bit of a uh, multifaceted question. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful question. Whoever asked this question, congratulations. This is an amazing question, and I'm sure a lot of us have this question. So I would say the answer to the first one, does our society condition us and then kind of contribute to these self-sabotaging behaviors? I would say absolutely yes. In fact, when you look at the research, over 90% of the population kind of drifts aimlessly without that life of, of fulfillment and the full achievement. I mean, there's only what a small percentage of people that truly capture and have that, that total ultimate abundance. So I would say yes. And to that point, to bring a little bit science behind it, the reason why is that, why it's affect, affecting us uh, specifically, um, or the person that also that that asked, so why is it affecting you? If I'm speaking, this person is on the on the call right now, is because of something that uh, in our brain we have what's called emotional contagion and mirror neurons, and that comes from the times again part of our survival mechanism when we needed to stay in a herd. So it's so much easier for us to conform and mirror the behaviors of those around us. So we want to stay almost like, and we're mirroring, we're subconsciously picking up the behaviors the actions even thoughts of other people the newest research that's what the, the research shows so we are going to stay consistent with 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 what the group of people that we surround ourselves with is doing and you might have heard the quotes of by Jim Rohn you are the average of five people you spend the most of your time with that's exactly what happens um so definitely definitely um that has a valid point so it would be yes and the second part of the question was um I think it was about what can we do to overcome that 
that. That's right. Mm-hmm. Well, a couple of things. Number one thing is, um, I, I, I believe it's Mother Teresa who said the quote, if we want to have a clean world, we want to start with our own uh, doorsteps first. So I would say number one thing is to look into ourselves and strengthen our blueprints, our subconscious blueprints to make sure that it's strong enough so you can be leaders we can be that example so starting with ourselves number one so we're strong enough putting that masks on ourselves first and second of all um pick the peer group you want to surround yourself with i mean i am blessed that i am surrounded by one of the top top performers on this planet and or it's the, the, the the top top coaches in this world and i i love playing at this game i love learning from them because when you play tennis against someone who is much better than you your game will always get much better so i would say pick that circle now sometimes people say well i can't pick the circle i don't pick my own family and you know uh, my family is negative or i don't have that uh, um, or now during COVID or whatever the, the, the stories are right now, well, then if you absolutely cannot find someone, you want to be the leader in that circle and you want to exemplify and strengthening those around you. Great. Thank you for those f- thoughtful responses. Here's another one that digs in that arena. How do you get others to provide their honest thoughts and feedback about you? Or how do you discover your inner subconscious identity um and i want to uh comment around here you know so so one of the ones that so theories that come to mind is that of johari's window where you have you know so those that know about things that you know about yourself and things that others know about yourself um and obviously there is you know as we look into those there are areas which um neither you or the uh, or others know about yourself but Conversely, sort of diagonally across from that, if, if this was a two by two matrix, if you will, are areas that both you and others know about yourself. And in this scenario, you're going to find the other two diagonals or the other two quadrants of this diagonally across from each other, areas that you know, but others don't, your secrets, and areas that others know, but you are not aware of those. So how could we get others to give uh and provide us with their thoughts and their feelings honestly and candidly about us and our performance and the way that we are Mm -hmm. okay so the question is if i understand correctly how we get others not to be afraid to give us feedback let's say we do have some behaviors sabotaging behaviors but we find so i'm assuming that let's say the others ones are not coming in and saying to Mm -hmm. us afraid or they're too lazy or whatever whatever their belief system or whatever their filter is set up they decide not to share with us um i would say well i mean it's such a it's i love this question but it's so loaded i can do the entire entire separate seminar about it because they're different people have different um different approaches and there 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 are ways how you can appeal to depending what kind of personality this person is and so on and so forth Mm -hmm. but one of the things is for me um and that's more from the personal experience is noticing in your behavior What is it that you are projecting? Because oftentimes we think others won't give us feedback, but the truth is like, just kind of, again, putting mirror to ourselves and like, are we always providing feedback? And what is it inside of us that is preventing us oftentimes from giving the feedback because that belief gets projected on others. And again, it gets picked up by the subconscious mind. And if you are focusing on that, it's gonna it's gonna come back the same way. So almost like asking also yourself, am I providing enough feedback? And asking if you if you're not pro- projecting. And in a sense, when let's say you say I am providing great feedback, you just others are afraid of providing this feedback. See what happened. Maybe um, were were they rewarded when they were providing you feedback, or how were your reactions when you were providing feedback? So um, I know. Um, one of my mentors um once said um you know like when somebody comes in with something that was wrong and he used to say uh i what did he say he said so something somebody misplaced hundred thousand dollars and he said hundred thousand dollars and he just lost it right and then he noticed that this person has never came back again and said when something was wrong. So what he changed you have to almost change interrupt the pattern and say it in such a way that um 
you're rewarding when they're bringing back and maybe say it that's fascinating right so you want to you want to make sure that what you are giving the feedback on the feedback as mm -hmm. well and and sharing how we can and it's the it's the communication but it's really energetically um the person is going to pick up if you're thinking that oh they're not giving me feedback they energetically are going to pick up on this and they're not going to give you the feedback mm -hmm. and the second question i think it was answered in the presentation so how do you check where your subconscious identity is set at so like i said just close your eyes and um and see uh, what were your current results uh, for the uh, and consistent results for the past little while and then through that reflective process mm -hmm. that, that's how you would enlarge the, the windows of awareness for yourself great those are those are great comments in terms of how you can have others give you more information about you and be honest and candid and i think you know you're touching on the concept of reciprocity you know mm -hmm. so provide them with honest candid feedback and reward the positive behaviors and that you would anticipate uh, a reciprocal um, contribution towards you and your feedback. And, and that's a great place to be uh, for both sides, obviously. That's a sort of a textbook example of a win-win scenario, obviously. Fantastic, that's, that's great. You must be working with a lot of fascinating individuals uh, or have done so, but what might have been, and you may be a lot of uh, uh, examples to search through, but the one that might have stood above others, maybe top one or top three uh, things that you have that you would say anyone walking out of here uh, could take away and implement uh, the next day, perhaps. What maybe your top three, uh, one or three thoughts, whether it uh, would be to, 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 to recommend for others? So the um, the thoughts to recommend the t the takeaways the actions. How takeaways? Okay. Hmm. Again, very loaded question, but I love it. Um, I would say number one, really focus on conditioning your mind, so it doesn't condition you, because we oftentimes think that this wiring that that's just how we are. And it's not true. The neuroscience shows we change ourselves periodically. We can totally rewire yourself. You can literally become unrecognizable to yourself, to your loved ones. You can totally awaken that true potential of yourself. But you want to start with, with, with understanding how do you condition your mind. I would say that's number one. Number two, find a way to uh, and again there's i love because that could be the totally uh, i have totally another lecture on that um but the way to to keep yourself in that optimal resourceful state so we oftentimes think when we wake up in the morning okay i'm just having a bad day and emotions just happen and you know like if you ever had a day that it was a bad day and just dragging and nothing is going right and then sometimes you had a day where everything was going right and you were coming up with a great um great solutions so make sure you put yourself into that resourceful state resourceful emotional state and although again we don't have time to tap into how to do it but although we think emotions happen they don't just happen you don't want to judge the emotion just like you wouldn't judge droplets of rain but you want to make sure that you have the tool to put yourself into that resourceful state and don't don't waste that time but be in that resourceful state so yeah so number one make, make sure you condition your mind number two make sure you condition your state your emotional state and number three would be align yourself with the people that are playing at the levels that you want to play or mastermind with the ones that can help you to achieve these results faster because as i mentioned jar cannot read its own label mm -hmm. and we like the more you the more you can align with somebody that can help you with that the faster you're going to get to your results and life is too short to play at the levels that are not at your full potential so this would be my top three fantastic fantastic takeaways the, the the top three takeaways excellent mariola thank you so very much for taking time and being here and presenting to our audience 
and helping uh, those who are here uh, uh, watching this the live session or the recording uh, up and down the road as well. But thank you so very much. My pleasure. And I hope. And I also want to take an opportunity to thank all of those who are uh, who have tuned in to today's session and watching this live or for all of you that will be uh, maybe watching this uh, the recorded version of, uh, of this as well. Um, next session of the business readers uh, would be on uh, we will have a presenter from Brock University's faculty uh, uh, coming in and that, that, that is Dr. Ingrid Marcus. Um, so she will be speaking on an also very exciting in the area of power and gender and politics. A very exciting area. I'm very much looking forward to her session and I hope uh, many of you will be able to join us during the next session of Business Breeders. Also, Business uh, Goodman Group is a community-focused learning and services development provider. And the Goodman Group is uh, positioned to help a number of different uh, individuals and organizations and one of the areas that we are working currently is by provision of new programs and one of our new programs is that for, is, is, is the Canadian Business for Internationally Trained Professionals program. The registration for this program is closing soon. Uh, as you can see the, the, the details of this on screen. Uh, you're encouraged to reserve your seat uh, at your earliest convenience because before those seats uh, are taken. We are uh, fortunate in the number of collaborations and collaborators uh, that are available, uh, that, that, that have shared their vision and have made their, their bins and their resources available uh, through creation of this program. It's a really wonderful program and I would encourage as many of you as possible to take those seats uh, before they uh, for the take up. So registration is closing on that soon and you can visit uh, Brock University and Goodman Group uh, for further details on this. And we also have on the next slide, the, uh, uh, the uh, a new series of programs in the area of data-driven decision-making. Uh, so I'm so pleased to announce this and share the information for this program with you. We're the first of in the series of seminars coming up on May 4th and May 6th. Um, and the focus would be on the fundamentals of data-driven decision-making. Um, for early bird pricing groups or alumni discount, please just reach out to a member of the Goodman Group team, or you may register at brocky.ca slash Goodman Group with, uh, and or feel free to send an email to a member of the team, myself or, or anyone in the team. And we'll be um, getting back in touch with you uh, in response to this. Okay. With that's all that we have time for for today's session. Um, we will be coming back in two weeks time with Dr. Ingrid Nackers on the next session of